What you guys got another video on why are people not switching to Windows 11 and probably reasons why you would want to not use Windows 11. The first one is going to be Windows Recall. Now, a lot of people probably don't understand that Windows Recall is not actually working on every single Windows 11 operating system. You do need to have a Copilot Plus PC. Now, there's a lot of speculation at the beginning saying Recall is running on your computer and it's copying all your data and sending it back to Microsoft. And of course, this was not true. Uh, basically, you do need a Copilot Plus PC and that has to have an MPU processor as it is in December 2025. It doesn't run and collect and harvest data on a normal standard Windows 11 operating system. But that being said, that's not to say that Microsoft are not planning to implement this on every single CPU in the future. Now, me personally, I don't like Windows Recall. It's going to be capturing uh, all of your information and storing it in an encrypted uh, part of your drive. And I just don't like the idea of having something like this taking snapshots of everything I do on my computer. And I think a lot of people will think the same. Next up is Windows Copilot. AI is being embedded into Windows 11 just about everywhere and people don't want it. And I think Microsoft are trying to push to see if they can make Copilot the number one AI platform to use. And it's actually losing out to Gemini and ChatGPT. It's now third in the rankings and I think they need to start addressing this issue. Now, you can use uh, AI on the internet. You don't need to have it embedded in your operating system. This is a web page you can open up and go and do whatever you want to do on AI on the internet. You don't need to have it embedded in the OS. Now, of course, Windows has it embedded in Notepad, Paint, uh, Edge, and you've got the application that's installed on here. It's starting to get embedded just about everywhere. And everyone I talk to don't use it. I don't use it on the actual operating system itself. I uninstall it and remove it. But if you're one of these people that do use AI that's built into Windows, then let me know in the comments section down below. I personally don't use AI at all inside Windows. Let's talk about number three, which is Microsoft accounts. Microsoft are trying to enforce you to use a Microsoft account during the out-of-box experience phase when you're installed in Windows. And this is because they just want you to sign in to your Microsoft account during the setup phase so you get to see all of the out-of-box experience uh, screens. And these are all to do with paid products, advertisement, and things like that. So you can't install Windows 11 anymore without using workarounds as a local account. And this has been a big problem for a lot of people, and they just don't want to use a Microsoft account during the setup phase. But Microsoft have been blocking pretty much every single workaround that people come up with. And Microsoft are trying to force you to use this method. And a lot of people are not having it. And they will use other methods to get a local account during the installation phase. It's all about control and taking away choices that you used to have. And this is what Microsoft seemed to be doing with Windows 11 taking away all of the choices that you used to have to do things on your computer. And part of them forcing you is to make you use things like OneDrive. Microsoft OneDrive is another thing that Microsoft are trying to force you to use. And of course, they only give you a small amount of space for free, and you're going to run out of space very quickly. And this is set up uh, by default during the installation phase. And then eventually what will happen is you'll end up having to buy more space. Microsoft BitLocker is another reason because this is automatically turned on during uh, the installation phase by default. And this is also encrypting your drive as well. And this causes people a lot of problems, especially people that are not familiar with uh, encryption. And basically what will happen is they end up losing their encryption key or their password, and they end up having to go to a PC repair shop which cost them a fortune to try to get this reset. Now, I can understand for security reasons why they want you to encrypt your drive and have a Microsoft account and also have OneDrive for backing up your data, but a lot of people don't want it and they should have a choice, but Microsoft don't want to give you that choice. 
unwanted apps. There's tons of bloat inside Windows 11 and people have to go through and uninstall all of this bloat every single time they install Windows. And of course you update Windows and down they come, they start to reinstall themselves again. And there is ways of blocking it, but it is an absolute nightmare to keep on top of. And you can see there is just literally tons of apps that no one ever uses and they will have to go through and uninstall them all. You've got Edge as well, which is another one that comes uh, on the system which doesn't allow you to uninstall it and it's forced on you to use Edge. And Microsoft are taking away the control that you used to have on certain things in previous generations of Windows and forcing you to do certain things on this version of Windows. And you can uninstall things like Copilot and other applications inside here, not all of them, but they don't want you to uninstall certain features like Edge, uh, the Microsoft Store and so on. They used to be, but they are taking away your choice and, and forcing you to have these on the system. And this is where people then start to use scripts and debloated versions of Windows to try and get around this problem. And of course, this is obviously a security risk. So this is the problem we face in 2025. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the Microsoft telemetry. Microsoft have started to harvest your information on Windows 11, and this has been a big turnoff for a lot of people. You can see here online speech recognition. Uh, you have to turn a lot of this stuff off. Uh, inking and typing and uh, personalizations. This is another one that is obviously to do with telemetry. And there's tons of it inside Windows 11 that you have to go through and turn off. Diagnostic and feedback is another one that you have to turn off and delete all the diagnostic data. And literally, there's services running in the background. Anytime you open up an application, it wants to connect out to some sort of Microsoft server and harvest that information and send it back. And this is something that people don't want. And of course, people then start uninstalling every single app on Windows 11 and starting to use alternative third-party apps because of the amount of data harvesting that is going on on Windows 11. Now, some people will say that Windows 11 is one big spy machine and it's just harvesting and tracking everything you do on the internet. And Microsoft have said that's simply not true and they only take out certain basic information from you. Next is broken updates. Windows updates are notorious for breaking on Windows 11. It seems every time Microsoft release a feature update or release an update to fix something, it breaks multiple other things on the computer. And this can go on for many, many months and it can be very frustrating. I myself uh, was on 23H2, which I found probably the best version of Windows 11, had no issues with it whatsoever, and I stayed on that version right up until end of life for that version of Windows 11. And then I upgraded to 24H2, had loads of problems, went back to Windows 10, then I give Windows 11 a go again, and of course went to 25H2, started getting taskbar disappearing, started getting File Explorer freezing and locking up my system, I had to full shut down the computer because the PC was locking up, and when I installed Windows 10, all of these problems went away. So Microsoft need to really fix their Windows update program and try to make it a little bit more stable for people so they don't have really bad issues like they've been having over the last number of years. Because if they don't get a grip, people are just not going to upgrade to Windows 11. And they need to iron out a lot of these problems that they've had uh, with all of the things we've been talking about if they're going to try to coax people away from Windows 10. And maybe they need to lighten up on the system hardware requirements to allow people to move up to Windows 11 because Windows updates is a major big problem for a lot of people. And a lot of people are pausing it and also setting it to manual and just not updating enough. And that's because they don't want their PC to break. Moving on to number nine is baked in ads. Ads are literally everywhere on Windows 11. And if you don't turn these features off, you will start getting nag boxes popping up with adverts, promotions, and things like that. 
to sell you their wares, i.e. OneDrive and other things that they like to push on people. And sometimes uh, these are on your lock screen and they'll be inside Windows itself. So I try to turn off all of this stuff because you're going to get an advertisement ID and if you don't opt out of all of this, you will literally be pushed these sorts of tips and suggestions and other things that they like to force on you. And there's loads of places on the system you have to go through like group policies and also registry edits to turn a lot of this stuff off to opt out of their advertisement campaign where they want to force ads on you. And you'll see them even on the lock screen adverts on there as well. And if you want to stop them, you're going to have to turn everything off. And that's just the way you have to do things inside Windows 11. Next up, we're going to be talking about number 10, which is your taskbar restrictions. The amount of restrictions on the taskbar is huge. They've taken away the ability to do a lot of things with the taskbar now, and that's because of their, you know, widgets and things like that. And of course, if you want to use it on the left-hand side, you can still, but there's only two options, on the left and in the center, and that's pretty much it. You can't have it on the sides, and you can't have it on the top, like some people used to. And it comes down to choice, and they've taken away that choice for you and just basically said, this is all you're going to get, and that's it. And what they've done is put on, on uh, things like widgets is something that I don't like myself, but it's very basic. If you look here, inside the taskbar behavior, there's just really basic settings. There's not a lot you can do here. And of course, there was ads also inside your search as well. Now, Microsoft Store has also had some changes. Again, you get adverts inside here as well, and they've taken away the ability for you to disable app updates. And again, you can't do a lot of things that you used to be able to do inside here because they've blocked a lot of that. So basically, they've taken away the choices that you used to have, and you used to be able to uninstall the Microsoft Store, but now they don't want you to uninstall it. And now they're saying it's a core component and it has to be part of Windows, just like they have said with other features in Windows, which used to be able to uninstall and now you're not allowed to. And yet in the EU, they're allowed to uninstall uh, things like Edge and stuff like that as well. Let's move on to that hideous start menu that no one liked. And of course, this is something that a lot of people complained about. You can't change the size of it. You can't customize it very much. And it seems like that they just pushed something out very, very quickly and they never did anything about it. They just left it. And of course, now they've actually rolled out an update for that start menu. And you might be thinking it's something really decent. And this is it right here. This huge monstrosity that they've uh, pushed out in Windows 11 25H2 and of course, it's it's not great. I've done a dedicated video on this. If you want to go and watch that, you can do. It seems they've tried to customize what they had already and try to fix what they had instead of starting from scratch. But this looks an absolute Frankenstein of a start menu. It really does. I would just not bothered using it. And again, it's going to be pushed out very, very soon to a lot of people. So if you don't like it, then you can use something like Start 11 to replace this, which is way better than what this is. And that's what I'd advise you to do. It's not very good and you can't do a lot of things with it. If you want to watch that dedicated video, then go and watch it and I'll explain more about it on there. Let's talk about the 13th and final issue, which is hardware requirements. This is the thing that started it all. And this is what made millions of computers uneligible to upgrade to Windows 11. Now, of course you can still do it unofficially, but it's not advisable. And again, I do think they are going to clamp down on this at some point. But this is what's stopping a lot of computers from rolling out updates to Windows 11. And this has probably affected probably 500 plus million computers that they won't be able to upgrade to Windows 11 because they have unsupported hardware. So these are the things I think Microsoft need to change and address to make people want to use Windows 11 because the market share for Windows 10 is still quite huge. It's at least 40 odd percent of people still using Windows 10 and they refuse to use Windows 11. And these are the changes that I think Microsoft are going to need to address 
to be able to tempt people to come over to Windows 11. And some people might say it's just too far gone and Windows 11 is done and literally it's going to end up like Vista, probably being the worst operating system they've released. Now, it might be the most secure operating system they've released to date, but it is definitely not the most liked because of the things we've mentioned in this video. And I think they do need to address these things very quickly. Otherwise, people are just not going to either upgrade to Windows 11 or they're just not going to use it at all and they're going to swerve it and use something else. Maybe it might be the year for Linux, as they keep saying, every single year, but you never know. We'll have to wait and see. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you think I've missed something, let me know down there. I'll be happy to read your comments. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.